Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme, Hearts get a clean bill of health ahead of their crucial showdown with Aberdeen. Mark McGee says it's vital they take points off Celtic if they want to finish in the top six. And with the championship now in the bag, Rangers set their sights on the Petrofac Training Cup on Sunday. Just a few of the talking points Alan Ruff and myself will be discussing, <coughs> I'm delighted to say, in the coming company of Peterhead midfielder Simon Ferry who's here with us in the studio. Great to have you along with us uh, and of course uh, with the championship in the bag, I did mention there Simon, suddenly you guys have got a chance to spoil the party. Nobody, but nobody I think fancies you guys. No, of course, I mean Rangers have done brilliant this year uh, to go and win the league so early. Uh, we a good Falkirk and Hibs team in that league as well. Uh, they've done it playing good football as well so all, all the odds are against us on Sunday, we know that but We've done well this season, we went 19 games unbeaten, you didn't do that if you're a terrible team, you know, so hopefully we can go there and cause an upset. Yeah, we've got lots to talk about with regards to uh, Peter Head. we'll get a wee insight into your gaffer as well, because of course, Ruffy, we know him very well indeed. Um, before we talk about Petrofact Training Cup, uh, Hearts finally um, get a clean bill of health, looks as if their squad's going to be okay uh, for what will be a battle for second for Hearts, mm -hmm. and maybe still to keep Aberdeen in the title run? Yeah, I think if Hearts were to win this one, I think they would believe with the games left that they could maybe catch uh, Aberdeen. Uh, it'll be a big, big game for them. Unfortunately for Aberdeen, uh, that could be a, a sore one for them. It's always a difficult place to go there and try and get a result. And uh, this, could be the, this could be the big day for Aberdeen, the decision day if, if they were to come through that game they might believe that they can still do it. Yeah, I mean, footballers always have a chat in the dressing room about results elsewhere in other divisions. What's the general viewpoint on the way Aberdeen are going about their business and running Celtic close? I think it's brilliant, isn't it, for Scottish football? I mean, when Rangers went out of the league, everyone probably thought Celtic could walk the league every year. Um, in the last couple of years, Aberdeen have done brilliant to run them close. I mean, I've got some great players. Uh, when I played against them at Dundee, they were easily the best team we played against. Um, Hayes is brilliant, I think. Uh, the wee boy Shinny for left back. Um, no, so I think it's brilliant for Scottish football the way Aberdeen have done it. And they're a big club, so they should, they should be up there with Celtic, you know? Yeah, absolutely. In a strange sort of way, uh, Ruffy, this is, for me, the final point. If they don't mm -hmm. get three points out of this one, I think everybody will just shut the door and say, OK, Celtic are just going to coast in after the split. Yeah, I would think so. If they, if they were to lose the game uh, at the weekend and Celtic were to win theirs, you know, that would be ten points. You know, I, I can't see Celtic throwing that away. So it's a massive game for them. But the last time Aberdeen uh, went to Tyne Castle, they probably put on their best show of the season. They were absolutely magnificent in the first 30 minutes. And uh, they'll be hoping they can do that at the weekend. Yeah, it's one of those stadiums that I think, uh, and great testament, I think, to the <coughs> other clubs. When Rangers weren't in the uh, top flight, I mean, Tyne Castle is mobbed. The Hearts fans have responded big time to what Robbie Nielsen's doing there, Simon. Oh, definitely. I was on the bench. I played. I was on the bench for Celtic at Tyne Castle when I was about 18, and after it, I phoned my dad and says, "I didn't come up to play football anymore." I was that scared. Do you know what I mean? The, the punters <laughs> really was ask, kept shouting, "Who are you? Who are you?" Um, but I remember thinking, "God, you need to be a top player to be able to play here and play well." You know, the Celtic players that day were. I think they won the last minute goal, so it's a very intimidating place to go, especially for younger players. Do you know what I mean? So. Hearts have done brilliant this year, but I think a lot of it's down to that, that stadium and the fans. Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't worry about people asking you who you were. I mean, they still ask us to as well. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, Simon, here's the table. Let's have a look at it, see um, how it all stands as far as the Premiership is concerned. Uh, there's Aberdeen tucked in behind Ruffy, and if they do get that win, suddenly they put the pressure on a Celtic side uh, that will know they need to take something mm -hmm. from Motherwell. Can't slip up, especially after what happened at Dens Park. Yeah, I mean, that's what Aberdeen will be hoping, that uh, Celtic aren't particularly playing in top form in every game. There are particular games where they just drop their guard a wee bit. Aberdeen will be hoping that is the case. Uh, we've all seen what happened the last time. Well, not the last time. One of the times that Celtic went to Motherwell on a very important day in Motherwell came out winners, so they'll have that in the back of their mind as well, and I'm sure Matt McGee will have his players fired up as well. Yeah, of course there's a lot at stake for Motherwell, they know top six will be guaranteed if they take all three points from Celtic, and uh, Matt McGee, the Motherwell manager, has mentioned it's all about what they do. Uh, in this league, uh, everyone's capable of beating everyone else, taking something off everyone else. Um, I think that, you know, if 
we don't get anything on Saturday morning, I think we're in trouble because I think the mentality of the other three teams will be good enough to go and get wins, you know. So I think we need something on uh, on Saturday morning. Um, I've always mentioned, you know, you're lucky enough to have a good manager in Jim McAnally up there. Um, it's a mixture of being tactically aware, Simon, but also that little mixture of personality, how to deal with players. Mark McKee's got that quality. Oh, def definitely. I mean, um, Jim's brilliant at that. Um, I would say that's his two main points. He sets his teams up really well against the opposition. You know, he changes formations three, four times a game if he sees it isn't going right. And then on the other side, he really knows how to deal with players. I mean, the main thing up there is the boys love Jimmy. They all want to play for him, and I think that's why we've done so well. Yeah, and again, McGee uh, has those similar qualities. You know, can look at the collective, mm -hmm. but suddenly can look at individuals that w weren't performing under Ian Barraclough. So, I, I wouldn't. I, I can't pick this one. I can't think that Celtic, uh, you know, are an absolute shoe in to get the three points here. Rob. No, I, I think unfortunately for Celtic, there, there's too many uh, people at Motherwell with Celtic connection, uh, and when you come up against your your old team, you know, you always want to do well. You always want to win the game, uh, not to sort of a prove a point or anything like that. You just you just want to win, you know. And Celtic, I've got players in that team. Uh, sorry, Motherwell, I've got players in that team that have been with Celtic that can cause problems. Yeah, Simon, you started out your career at Celtic. What do you make of them under Ronnie Dyler? Um, I think they're a bit hit and miss, to be honest. Uh, we played them f four times last year, twice they were brilliant and twice they weren't great. Um, I think Dundee have got two draws with them this year and it's kind of summed up their season. Sometimes I watch them and I think they're a right good team. And then other times I think they're struggling against some of the teams in the SPL, you know. So I think inconsistency would be the word for Celtic, I would say. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's the general view of uh, everyone, Ruffy. When you look at the at the battle that's going on now, uh, do you think maybe, maybe some of these players are actually looking and getting caught up in the hype that's surrounding this forthcoming Scottish Cup semi-final with Rangers? No, no I think the players uh, will be wanting to impress their manager. You know, I think everybody would want to play in that game. You know, and performances leading up to that will, will be a selection headache for the manager. So you want to give them that headache and uh, that's what they'll be out to, to prove at the weekend that they are the ones that uh, should be in that game against Rangers. Yeah, um, OK. Um, we're going to talk uh, Petrofact Training Cup coming up. Uh, very shortly, uh, of course, Rangers, uh, the opposition uh, for Simon Ferry, who's our boot room guest uh, this evening, uh, talking about the possible chance of a cup upset. Just before we get to the break, Ruffy, uh, Scotland are 40th in the uh, FIFA rankings. Um, we've gone up a few places, yeah. but uh, the indication of how good it's going for Northern Ireland, they're at 26th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... We've discussed this before. I mean, they've done <coughs> remarkably well to to where they are. But I would I would like to think that if it was a uh, if it was us were to come up against them, I, I would like to think that we were a better side than them. But that remains to be seen. If we get the chance to prove that, but I would I would, I would take that uh, ranking me a pinch of salt because yeah. we've got France and Italy coming up next. So we so could be, drop down we could just be yo yoing about that <laughs> uh, ranking. I hope not. I hope the boys go there and uh, pop a good performance and we keep moving up. Yeah, uh, of course, we all want to see Scotland do well, Simon. Uh, it lifts the whole nation. If, you, if we could get to a major championships, um, it's so difficult to know that yet again in the summer we'll just be looking on. Uh -huh, isn't it nice when, obviously, all your pals, especially I've got loads of pals in South and Irish pals as well, and they'll all be supporting their team and we'll need to pick a second team again, won't we? So I think Strachan's a, a, a brilliant manager, so I think he's definitely the man to take us forward. Um, hopefully in the next, the next World Cup he can, he can get us qualified for it. Yeah, uh, fingers crossed. Um, I wonder, Rob, if you can guess the top five teams in the FIFA rankings. Uh, Spain. No. No. They're not there. They're not there. They're not in the top five. I can't <coughs> believe that. Oh, England must be in the top five. They're, they're, they're tenth. <laughs> tenth. <coughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Um, Republic of Ireland are 30, 31st. Wales are 24th. England are 10th. Northern Ireland are 26th. And, of course, Scotland 40th. The top five in the FIFA rankings, Argentina, number one. Belgium. Chile. <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> and Germany. Well, the, the South American qualifiers are on the now, you yeah. know, so you get an indication of there, but Colombia is a surprise to be. 
Yep, absolutely. Uh, there's your top five. Uh, don't forget, you can interact with us on the programme. Give us your thoughts. Uh, Simon Ferry is going to be talking uh, Petrofac Training Cup with us. Uh, of course, I've already had a wee look to see that the referee is going to be George Salmon for uh, the big game at Hamden. And uh, Ruffy, Simon's already mentioned he's up against it. But uh, the majority of fans going into this game is going to be incredible. It's going to be a great day for him. Uh, it's not the first time that uh, the underdogs have went along there. And just the occasion will be absolutely fantastic for everybody. OK, we're going to get to know Peter Head a wee bit better after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our bootroom guest is Simon Ferry of Peter Head. Uh, we've been looking at the, the results over the last uh, couple of games, Ruffy. Uh, did we take Peter Head at any point in any treble? Cause well, we have done throughout the season, yeah. uh, and I have to say that uh, nine times out of ten we'll pick them. They've came up with the goods. It's been other teams that have let us down. Yeah, I'm just talking about the last two games, roughly, because <laughs> I have a feeling, a sneaky feeling, that Jim McAnally has got his cards closely yeah. tucked in here uh, for this one. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to try and replicate maybe the, the feats of St Johnson to catch them out on a surface which is in a big park as well, Hamden Park. Uh, they were talking about the surface getting relayed and the boys were devastated. Eh? They thought the Rangers would get a fresh pitch to pass the ball in, do you know what I mean? So we're happy that the P Hamden pitch is dug up. Uh, Jim's, Jim will definitely have summing up his sleeve. Um, he's not given any away the last two or three weeks uh, who's going to play or what. So knowing him, we'll get top five minutes before we're going to go out uh, and get to what he wants us to do. Yeah. And hopefully we can go and do it. What is it about him? Because we think uh, you know that he, he deserves a bigger job. What is it that's special about him? He's just so relaxed. He's so laid back. Yeah, he's relaxed. He just makes players feel at ease. Um, and honesty is a massive thing with Jim. I don't think we've ever came in a, a team talk and he's gave us a cliche about do this the football the cliches. You know what I mean? He says exactly what he thinks. If you ask him a question, he gives you an honest answer. And I don't think you can ask for any more for a manager. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and of course. Good players is a key as well. He's been, yeah, of course, he's uh, been lucky in his... Uh, I, I, I'll take that back. Not so much lucky, but he's been shrewd in his recruitment of certain players. Definitely. I mean, you see, I think we've, we, there's quite a lot of players in the past two years that have dropped down for higher divisions to come and play for Jim. And it's not because, to be in you know, our respect, it's not a play for Peter Head. It's because they want to play for Jim again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Jim was my first coach, and I'll never forget how much I enjoyed playing for him. So as soon as I knew my time at Dundee was up, I got straight on the phone to Jim and asked him, if he'd be interested in taking this, and luckily he was. Yeah, uh, and, and from that point of view, I mean, on a personal level, um, I know that I, I think the, the sad way to sum up your career, Simon, has been unfulfilled because of the great potential you had. You've been dogged by injuries. I have, basically, I mean, I've been a playing, like, playing like a cripple the whole, my whole career, eh, so I've done better than quite a lot of my pals who are probably better than me, so I can't complain, do you know what I mean? I've played at Wembley three times, I played under the canoe, which was brilliant. He was one of my heroes growing up at Celtic, so stuff like that, stuff that I remember when I'm older. But no, I, I think I could have done, could have done better. But now it's all just about enjoying football for me now, because obviously my back and that's a bit sore in my ankles. So going up, Jim, Jim makes everything a laugh. So that's mm. what I'm in it for just now. Yeah. Does it? Do you look upon it with regret, or do you look upon it as you know, as you almost like the ha the glass is half full there? Uh, definitely half full. I, I mean, as I said, there's better players than me that have not even made it in football, or made a career at it. So. I'm happy with what I've done, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and what about the the other players? Because, I, I again, you mentioned there that some players want to go and play for, for Jim McAnally. We, we can't believe uh, Rory McAllister. I mean, uh, it's just, it's like being, I mean, if any manager in any of the divisions, even the Premier League, uh, had suddenly got Rory McAllister landed on their doorstep, they'd be doing cartwheels. Uh, he calls himself Mr Peterhead, doesn't he? He says that when he retires, on name the stadium after him, so <laughs> he's some man. Um, Rory's a goal scorer. I think it doesn't matter what level you're at. If you can score goals, you can score goals. We, I played with Austin at Swindon, Charlie Austin, and he's a similar to Rory, not no great outside the box, but they can score a goal away. And I think no matter what level Rory played it, if he got a chance, he could stick it away. Yeah, and are you amazed by the circumstances of him? Because he's got his trade, he's quite happy to marry the two together. I think he's, he's far too laid back to be a, a professional football player. Eh? Um, everything's a laugh to Rory as well, so him and Jim mix perfectly. Eh? Yeah. They, they didn't even, Jim doesn't even shout at him when he does something, something bad, you know what I mean? They just look and laugh at each other, so <laughs> they've got a special kind of relationship, but obviously it works. And I don't think Rory would play as well for, for, for other managers as Jim does, because Jim gives him that, that freedom to go and express himself, do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, and again, I, I'll, I'll link this in, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. Jim McAnally worked under Brian Clough. 
Yeah, and you, you can see uh, where Jim's coming from. Uh, he, he's already been on the show and said he's he's not into the the badges. The, I mean, the, the coaching badges. Yeah. He's not into you know conforming to anything at all. He'll do it his way, uh, and that, and he'll never ever change. You know, and that's the way he is. And I think when he when he goes to clubs, that's a kind of respect as you've heard there from the players. But not only that, he seems to have it from the owners of the clubs as well. Yeah, uh, of course, um, with the PFA awards coming up uh, soon. I hate to say this, Rafi, I'm, I'm hoping maybe that Rory McAllister doesn't win it this year because if he wins it for a fourth time, I do not know what he's going to do yeah. in his acceptance speech because last last because, season yeah. he had a, a rave song that he was singing yeah, to. Yeah, I think if he, if he does win it and you, you maybe you might maybe know beforehand, I would be locking him up somewhere <laughs> and uh, just making sure he's fresh when he gets on the stage. Yeah, you, you might have looked towards uh, Rory for the goals. Are there other key players there that you think can win this game for you? Uh, the boys Shane Sutherland, he, I think he played 50 times for Inverness in the SPL, he's, he's been brilliant for us, he, him and Rory work really well together, eh? Sean, uh, Shane's a bit of an unsung hero, um, I'd say Shane's probably set up most of Rory's goals, um, so Shane's been, been very good for us and the boys at the back, Scott Ross and Ali Gilchrist who's on loan for St Johnston have been absolutely brilliant for us, so no, it's not, it's not, it's not just down to Rory, Rory doesn't actually do anything, eh? yeah. we do all the work and he stands in the box and sticks it in. <laughs> But uh, he'll tell you he's, he does everything, so yeah. we'll listen to him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's got over 30 goals here. Uh, exactly. It, um, just on the point of the opposition, because, you know, Jim's working out a plan and a strategy. What do you make of Rangers? I think they're, I think they're very good, Rangers. Uh, not seen a lot of them, but I watched them against Dundee, and I thought they were brilliant. Eh? They were pff, much, better, much better than Dundee on the day. Um, and Dundee are, a very, uh, Dundee are a very good SPL team, so it just shows you... The way Mark Warburton plays, I really enjoy watching it. They pass the ball really well, they move all the time. Athleticism, they've got, they've got the whole lot, I think, Rangers just now. Yeah, and it's a bit, you mentioned that you're playing football to enjoy yourself. Uh, do, you, do you look upon a game like this and think to yourself, OK, I know who I'm going to be up against. This is, this is a chance for me to show, to test myself again and maybe get that, that one little you know, 90 minutes to show people what I had. Of course, of course, I think every player in their team will think that. I mean, there's probably a lot of players that I think they're unlucky not to have played higher. So this is a chance to go and show it. Eh? There's no point in thinking it to yourself. You need to go and show people that you can do it. So what better chance than against Rangers at Hamden to go and show people that you can still play? Yeah, and with that, Ross County, look what they've achieved. Inverness as well. Is there a feeling up there in the, in the north that, you know, this might be a situation where suddenly, you know, you get three teams with the, you know, the majority of silverware from Scottish football? Uh, it's brilliant. I mean, who would have thought that five years ago that the three cups could maybe be up, up the Highlands, you know what I mean? Um, certainly not me, but that accent, man, that must be something in the accent because <laughs> it must just bore people to death. Eh? I, that's probably why they've won, won the three cups because I can't understand the word anyone's saying up there. Just nod my head. <laughs> well, they say football's an international language. That, that'll, do, that'll do for me as well. Um, I mean, it's exactly yeah. what um, I think Simon mentioned there is there's a team effort that it's going to take something monumental. They're going to have to, you know, ride the storm as you would expect yeah. with Rangers. But yeah, I think I think if you're Peter Head, you've you've got to look at cup finals and you've got to take cup finals that nobody ever thought that they were going to. Uh, the big team was going to win it, and I, I cast my mind back to Kilmarnock, uh, who got hammered for eight, eighty-five minutes and ended up winning the cup. You had St. Johnson, you know, you've got Inverness, <coughs> you know, but they. And Rangers will give them all, all the respect in the world, but on on the day, strange things can happen. You know, we saw it with Celtic when Craig Gordon got sent off. That whole game turned on its head. We things like that, that's what they'll be looking for. They'll be looking for a wee rub of the green as well. And they'll be hoping that uh, the, the 50,000 Rangers supporters there are only singing too loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, is there one player in particular that you think that is going to be the real menace that you guys have to watch out for? I think Kenny Miller. Yeah. He's, I think he's so underrated, Kenny Miller. He's played 60 times for Scotland or something. Um, I think he's, a, he's brilliant. He was at Celtic when I was in Alice. thought he was a really good player. He works really hard. and I think Kenny Miller would be a really important player for him. I really do. Yeah, and uh, as a guy who's been um, through the mill on more than a few occasions, um, will Simon Ferry go to bed and maybe dream about lifting that cup? Do you still dream of things like that? Uh, Nah, not really. Uh, I'll just go and enjoy it for the day it is, because I'll probably want to get another one. Um, pro most of the boys will think that as well, but if we could win it, it'd be brilliant. Um, 
we'll see what happens, but I know the boys will give their all. They've been brilliant all year, so to, to, to go and win that just top the season off. Yeah, and, and the last point, can you win the playoffs? Uh, definitely. I think it'll be here that we're going to play. Uh, we've beat them twice this year, they've not, not beat us once, so we'll be full of confidence going into the playoffs. I think that's when the boys are looking at it more. To, to try and get out this league and get up to the, the league above. Yeah, and if they do win uh, on Sunday and get through the playoffs, Ruffy, mm -hmm. who needs to converse with people from the north? Because they'll all be partying and they won't know what each other's saying anyway. <laughs> 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 you hope that doesn't No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the dawn or someone now. Well, listen, I'll tell you right now, um, it's been a joy having you on the programme, Sam. I've thoroughly really enjoyed it. And pass our uh, best wishes on to. Uh, Jim, it's going to be a great battle between uh, Rangers and Peterhead Petrofact Training Cup final at Hamden Park. From uh, Alan Ruff, from myself, Peter Martin, and from Peterhead, Simon Ferry. Good night. <laughs>